Sustainable Aquatics is one of the largest ornamental marine fin fish hatcheries in the world. Breeding and rearing dozens of fish species has produced innovations that have broad applicability in aquaculture. One of the core processes in the hatchery at Sustainable Aquatics is the mass production of rotifers as live food. Over several years, Sustainable Aquatics has developed a reliable method for producing billions of rotifers per day to feed fish larvae. This video is an example of rotifer mass culture. In this example, we're using a 1,000 liter reactor. This is a plastic liner bag in a metal cage frame. It's lit with T5 fluorescent lights on the side. These lights can be T5 or LED. The important thing is to have enough strength to illuminate the bag and grow the algae. The first step in growing road for mass culture is to establish a healthy culture of algae in one of these reactors. After 10 to 14 days of growth with the phytoplankton, we can add in a road for starter culture. The species of microalgae we're using in this case is Tetracellus, but it's possible to use other species as well. For a Tetracellus culture such as we're using here, what we want to see before we inoculate with rotifers is a very deep green color. In the beginning, when the bag is first inoculated with algae, it's a pale green. When it's dark green, like what you see here, it's ready for rotifers. One of the keys to these reactors is to maintain a very vigorous aeration to keep the cells in suspension and to for proper gas exchange. When these reactors are first inoculated, we use resting eggs or cysts for the rotifers. These are Rapionis Nahabakis cysts. In a small vial, there will be approximately 5,000 cysts. This works on any scale, so for instance, this is a 1,000 liter reactor, but it's possible to inoculate smaller or larger volume cysts and allow them the proper kind of grow. In subsequent reactors or bags, we can start with an inoculum from an existing bag, so serially starting cultures from previous cultures. It's important that every three or four weeks that we restart from cysts as they're clean. Over time in a culture, contamination can develop, and also dirt, detritus, debris can build up in the bag, and they can interfere with the proper growth of Four days ago, this reactor was inoculated with several million live rotifers. Over the period of those days, all the rotifers multiplied uh, rapidly to consume a lot of the algae. So you'll notice the color of this bag is a little bit less green, a little bit more pale than it was before, because the rotifers have consumed a large amount of the algae. At this time, we'll start supplemental feeding with the which is a complete rotifer dry diet. The next day and a half, we feed this diet three times in order to enrich the rotifers and help them continue to grow as the algae runs out. After five and a half days of growth of rotifers, this reactor is mature and ready for harvest. When the reactor is ready for harvest, we'll put a tube in the reactor that goes to the bottom to pull the rotifers out and bring them to a screen. This way they can be concentrated and then brought to the larval fisheries. A peristaltic pump is used to draw the rotifers from the reactor to a harvest screen. Here we have a harvest screen set up in the water bath to collect the rotifers as they come from the bag. When a sufficient number of rotifers have been collected in the screen, they'll be taken from the screen and placed into a pitcher. Clean seawater is used to spray the rotifers off of the screen. When the harvest is complete, these rotifers will be taken into the fish hatchery and given to larval fish. In summary, there are several advantages for the rotifer bag mass culture system. This simple system reduces contamination from unwanted algae and ciliates. It also builds in redundancy so that failure of one unit 
is not catastrophic for the whole production system. The bags are sterile and disposable, reducing labor cost. And finally, the bag system allows easy management of multiple rotifer species without cross-contamination. As more fish species are raised in commercial aquaculture, aquaculturalists are finding it useful to use rotifers of different sizes in the larval rearing. Fortunately, several rotifer species are now available to aquaculturalists for their larval rearing operations.